Good evening. We are witnessing a pivotal moment in Southeast Asian military strategy. It is happening right now, across the archipelago of the Philippines. For decades, the nation focused its defense posture primarily on internal threats. But today, the landscape has shifted dramatically. The Armed Forces of the Philippines, or AFP, are undergoing a profound transformation. This change is not just about new ships or aircraft, it is about acquiring a specific lethal capability, the power to stop an armored invasion in its tracks. This is the story of the Philippines' growing arsenal of anti-tank guided missiles, or ATGMs, weapons designed to ensure any hostile land force faces a formidable and deadly welcome. Tonight, we will peel back the layers of this strategic evolution. We will take a deep and factual look at the system's redefining Philippine defense. What specific missiles has the country acquired, how many, and what makes them feared? We sifted official statements, contracts, and verified news reports. From the Israeli Spike ER to the American Javelin and the supersonic Brahmos with land attack capability. This is more than inventory. It is a deliberate, methodical deterrent. A move to ensure sovereignty in a contested region. Our report is built on verified information, not speculation. We examined DND statements, PNA reports, contract records, and international coverage. This is the picture of what the Philippines will possess by 2025. Now, let's examine each key system and its impact. The first key component in this new arsenal is the Spike ER missile system, a product of Rafael Advanced Defense Systems, selected to modernize naval and coastal defense assets. The Spike ER was chosen to arm the Navy's MPAC Mark III fast boats turning these fast craft into potent tank and ship killers. Integration included launchers, training, and technical support from Rafael. The contract was finalized in 2017, with deliveries in batches thereafter. Reports by PNA and DND document deliveries and live fire tests. Initial deal reported at about 5.4 billion PHP, roughly $108 million at the time. The spike ER or extended range reaches up to 8 kilometers, Ideal for standoff engagements from small boats or ground vehicles, it uses electro-optical seekers plus fiber-optic man-in-the-loop guidance. Operators can see the missile's feed and guide it, even retarget mid-flight. Equipped with a tandem heat warhead to defeat explosive reactive armor, Precursor neutralizes ERA, main charge penetrates the hull. On impact, Spike ER creates a mobile, deadly coastal defense screen, capable of thwarting amphibious landings before a beachhead is established. This precision and control changed the calculus for coastal operations. With training and maintenance packages, operational readiness is sustained. Live fire tests in 2018 confirmed the system's integration and lethality. Next, the US FGM-148 Javelin, the infantry's fire and forget titan. Another pillar is the formidable FGM-148 Javelin, developed by a US defense industry partnership. The acquisition was pursued via U.S. foreign military sales with DSCA notification in 2019. Estimated value, $42.1 million, included 12 command launch units and 240 missiles, also training simulators, tech assistance and logistical support, primary advantage, fire and forget infrared guidance. The operator locks with the CLU then moves to cover, the missile guides itself. Its top attack profile strikes tanks at their weakest point. Effective range, over 2.5 kilometers, enables high survivability for anti-tank teams. Tandem heat defeats advanced reactive armor. First batch arrived in 2024, a milestone for AFP modernization. U.S. training teams and live fire exercises built operator proficiency. The Javelin is a quantum leap in lethality for ground forces. Gives small teams the power to stop a multi-million dollar tank fundamentally alters land-based defensive equations, bolsters the confidence of the Filipino soldier. Up next, Brahmos, a strategic system with supersonic reach. While not a traditional ATGM, the Brahmos supersonic cruise missile is a strategic game-changer, developed by an India-Russia joint venture led by Brahmos Aerospace. In January 2022, the Philippines became the first foreign buyer of this system. The agreement was valued at approximately $375 million for three shore-based batteries. First deliveries began arriving in April 2024, a moment of strategic importance for the nation. The Brahmos reaches speeds up to Mach 2.8 comma, making interception extremely difficult. By the time radar detects it, little time remains to react. Reported export range, about 290 kilometers. Warhead weight between 200 and 300 kilograms, massive conventional effect. At supersonic impact velocities, K-1 
Kinetic and blast damage is catastrophic. Able to neutralize command centers, logistics hubs, and radar sites. Deployed on the west coast, it extends an A2-AD bubble far beyond shorelines. It puts naval task forces and amphibious assets at extreme risk. Short reaction windows reduce interception success. Not an ATGM per se, but its warhead and speed can disable invasion logistics. It can sink transports carrying armored units before they reach shore. Thus BrahMos serves as the strategic hammer to keep the fight off Philippine shores. When placed side by side, these systems form a layered defense. Javelin. The infantry's close-range fire-and-forget sword. Top attack to hit vulnerable tank roofs. Spike ER, medium-range fiber-optic guided man-in-the-loop precision out to 8 kilometers. Operator confirmation reduces collateral risk and allows retargeting. Ideal for coastal defense and amphibious interdiction. Bramos, strategic level 290 kilometers range, Mach 2.8 speed, targets command centers and logistics far inland or at sea. A strategic hammer that prevents the fight from reaching the shore. Javelin and Spike ER use tandem heat for armor defeat, Bramos uses heavy blast fragmentation plus kinetic energy. Tactical swords versus strategic hammer, both needed for layered defense. Recap Javelin, close range, Spike ER, medium range, Bramos, long range strategic. Combined, they form a lethal, multi-layered shield. This raises the threshold for conflict and supports diplomatic leverage. It also enhances interoperability with allies like the US, Japan, and Australia. Next, we follow the paper trail. The contracts, press releases, and official records that verify these acquisitions. This analysis is grounded in official and verifiable sources, not hearsay. We cross-referenced DND statements, PNA articles, DSCA notifications, and manufacturer releases. A consistent timeline emerges across sources. DSCA News Release Number 19, 047 on July 23, 2019 detailed the Javelin proposal. It explicitly listed quantities, CLUs, missiles, and support elements. Public records confirm the inclusive nature of the package. PNA reports in 2017-2018 corroborate Spike ER selection for MPACs and tests. May 2018 coverage showed the first live fire test from an MPAC. These government reports included contract values and delivery timelines. The BrahMos contract signing on January 28, 2022, was widely published and confirmed by Philippine and Indian MODs. International coverage documented the $375 million agreement. Subsequent deliveries in April 2024 were reported and confirmed by DND spokespeople. By cross-referencing DSCA, PNA, manufacturer releases and delivery manifests, we reach high confidence. This is a facts-first report based on public records. These documents confirm capabilities actively being fielded and trained on. Next, how these systems reshape the battlefield and regional balance. These acquisitions have profound strategic implications for the Philippines and the Indo-Pacific. A decisive shift from an internal security force to territorial defense. A response to a changing geopolitical environment and contested features. These systems introduce asymmetric warfare tools to impose high costs on an attacker. A small team with Javelin can disable a heavily armored MBT. Fast attack craft with Spike ER can cripple larger naval assets. A shore-based BrahMos battery can hold a naval task force at risk. This is the essence of credible minimum deterrence. Potential losses force adversaries to reconsider invasion plans. A stronger defense posture creates diplomatic leverage. Joint exercises now include training with advanced systems, improving coalition readiness, interoperable systems strengthen partnerships with allies. Javelin, Spike ER and BrahMos provide overlapping defense layers. Readiness and training are vital to make these systems effective. This contributes to regional stability and a free, open Indo-Pacific. Now let's examine training, the essential second half of capability. Hardware is only half the battle, training is the other half. AFP emphasized comprehensive training programs with each system. Building sustainable, in-house expertise was prioritized. U.S. teams provided hands-on instruction, maintenance, and live fire practice for Javelin crews. Simulators accelerated proficiency before live launches. Maintenance training ensures long-term readiness. Rafael provided intensive technical training for Spike ER integration. Live fire drills validated crew's ability to operate under realistic conditions. Training covered seeker feed use, target ID, and mid-flight control. BrahMos training is complex. Indian advisors helped build local expertise. Training covers target acquisition, C2 procedures, launch sequences, and maintenance. New regiments and coastal defense units signaled long-term commitment. 
train the trainer programs create a sustainable pipeline within the AFP. Certification and live fire validation ensure operational credibility. This transforms equipment into effective capability. Finally, what does this mean for the Philippines going forward? As we stand here on August 27, 2025, the picture is clear. The Philippines has woven a formidable tapestry of defensive firepower. Infantry Javelin, Naval Spike ER, and Strategic Brahmos together form a layered shield. This is a strategic pivot toward credible deterrence and territorial defense. It arms the soldier and sailor with tools to face superior adversaries and prevail. Precision, training, and tactical acumen are force multipliers. A stronger defense encourages peaceful diplomatic resolutions. The ultimate goal is to prevent war. Deterrence that preserves peace. Modernization is ongoing. A long-term journey of adaptation. We've presented the facts, now we want your perspective. How do you see these systems impacting the regional balance? Drop your analysis in the comments below. If this breakdown gave you clarity, tap like to help others find it and subscribe to stay ahead of defense developments. Share this video with a friend who follows regional security. Your voice sharpens the conversation. Thanks for joining us. Stay informed, stay engaged, and help shape the first draft of tomorrow's security conversation.